Hello, and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are Green Wisdom Health, home of your low-cost lab work and information that keeps you living healthy <laughs> in a unhealthy world. <laughs> So today we are going to talk with you a little bit more. You know, we've been doing a uh, leaky gut. We did a couple of weeks ago uh, about digestion. And this week we're going to talk to you a little bit about still digestive things, but stomach issues that could be linked with osteoporosis symptoms. And I know you guys are going, how are bones linked with gut health? But Dr. Lewis is actually going to correlate this all together and tell us how and why and what we can do to help with prevention before you get the dreaded diagnosis of, oh my gosh, I have osteoporosis, which seems to have happened a lot this week in our office, which I guess led us to do a show on this. And we also have a few questions from our audience. Thank you so much. We always enjoy getting questions from you and we enjoy lis uh, listening to what you have to say. And we actually had a very nice uh, compliment Two we wanted to share with you. So, Dr. Lewis, can you tell us today about why stomach issues play an important role with osteoporosis? You know, Janet said I was going to link all this together, and it's like now the pressure's on and I'm sweating. So um, I don't know how much I can put together, but I throw information out there and see what sticks. Um, you know, we were doing, uh, I thought, well, I'll just do a series. I have to say that low or Siri will light up and talk to me. We were going to do it on GI health, and there's a lot. You know, I could go many, many, many podcasts on that. So we decided to tie it in, and I think that might be a recurring theme that we tie in the GI health to different uh, possible symptoms or diseases. So y'all let us know, you know, how we do. We, we do get a lot of compliments, and thank you. That really does help keep us going. We need encouragement, too. Well, you know, when you're talking about uh, digestive issues, a lot of people don't even realize they have a digestive issue. You, know, you can ask, or we have asked people coming in here, it's like, do you have a digestive problem? No, nope, no, nope, everything's great. Um, but if you're experiencing things like upset stomach or indigestion, cramping or constipation, or you frequently have to take heartburn medications, you have a digestive issue. It's always part of the equation. So you might really want to listen up and say, oh, maybe I do have one because Dr. Lewis is going to educate me now. Well, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they say they go by how they feel. And it's like, yes, we all want to feel better. And yes, I'll ask you how you're feeling. But you can have heart disease or cancer for 20 or 30 years and not ever feel it. So don't think how you feel is the, the entire you know, picture of what's going on. So... Back to what we were talking about uh, a couple of podcasts ago, uh, ago, there were like, there's pillars of health. You know, one is digestion, two is elimination, where Janet's the most well-known for her stories. Uh, Queen of constipation, <laughs> or yeah, non. Yeah. Uh, then you got the third pillar is like the microbial balance, and I don't think anybody has a good balance there, not that I can tell. Then you have barrier function. So that's the four pillars, and we're still in digestion. So we're going to link that into uh, osteopenia, osteoporosis, and fractures and things like that. Um, you know, the thing about it is, and people don't look at it this way very much, we eat about 30 to 50 tons of food in the average lifetime, and I think some people eat twice that much. And sometimes we're geared toward eating more food, trying to get the nutrients that's not in the food, so you go for large qu uh, quantity, um, and I don't think they know that, but it's the type of food that we eat that's uh, super important in keeping proper GI health, and that's going to tie in with the question that Joe uh, asked. Uh, you know, we call it the standard American diet, which stands, you know, sad. Uh, I like the other way they put it is the mud diet, modern urban diet. Neither one of them are good, and they're associated with pretty much every illness discovered, uh, most chronic GI issues, um, and that goes with highly processed foods, high amounts of refined carbohydrates, sugars, uh, artificial sugars or artificial sweeteners that are even worse, Hydrogenated fatty acids are horrible, 
horrible for you. Fat is not bad for you. It's the corn and soy and canola oil that's terrible for you. Um, preservatives. Now, now, why they put food colorings in some of the cheap vitamins and drugs, I'll never know. And, and food colorings that are known to cause cancer, why are they putting them in there? I'm not a big fan of fluoride in your water either. So so all these things are low in fiber. Uh, they don't have natural colors, which are like phytonutrients. And, you know, you just get kind of in a bad rut, and then you get the overgrowth of yeast and fungus and bad bacteria, and then that starts craving an even worse diet. So because we don't have enough hydrochloric acid, most of us, uh, even if you have acid reflux or GERD, most of the time it's too low, not too high. And, you know, you always need to check with a good GI doctor. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan of using us and, you know, using a good MD also. But most of the time, if you will quit the nasty food, which is grain, sugar, potatoes, genetically modified stuff, the artificial sweeteners, generally speaking, the acid reflux will go away. And if it doesn't, then you need digestive enzymes and probiotics. Uh, so you get the malabsorption issue. That's pretty important. Uh, from that point, what happens is <clears throat> you get the unprocessed or partially digested food particles. Uh, they create all kinds of problems. Your body sees them as improperly uh, digested, so they're assessed or they looked at by your gut bacteria, and many times that triggers an immune reactivity or you put out uh, immunoglobulins or antigens against these things. Uh, this usually, most people would notice it when they get GI-related discomfort like belching, bloating, gas, sometimes nausea, urgent diarrhea. Uh, some people have it as stomach pain. And those are the ones that get really, really, really bad, too. You know, the Crohn's and the celiac, and we're going to talk about that, too. Uh, so when this happens, you pretty much don't digest the very few nutrients that's in your food to start with. Um, so let's get into why or how that causes uh, osteoporosis. And I was on a big podcast as a guest yesterday, and the lady says, well, my doctor told me you can get everything you need out of the food. And my doctor told me these nutrients are not FDA approved. And my doctor told me, I said, let's stop right there. Number one, what I'm talking about is very well researched. And I read so much research on her podcast that she was just almost almost speechless. And uh, I said, this is very well researched. And, and if you look at the back of our PDFs on most of our supplements, you'll see a long line of research articles where all these came from. And I told her, and I, I like the FDA. I think they do some good things. But I said, anybody that's dumb enough, and that's too, you know, that's too bold of a statement, but anybody that relies on the FDA for approval or not approval, I said, the FDA approved the drugs that killed 120 to 140,000 people last year. Yeah, I think I'll let them decide what I need to take. So, folks, I'm trying to give you enough education where you can think for yourselves. Now, some of this information that I'm going to talk about came from uh, the journal Gastroenterology and Hepatology, Study of Blood. I can't say it, but I've been cutting back on my caffeine. That's not helping any. Um, this is from uh, Dr. Seymour Katz, K-A-T-Z and Stuart Wienerman, and this is from Einstein, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. So, see, this is well-researched stuff. And, you know, if you listen for very long, I quote enough research to let you know that, yep, that's what I go by, not just the crazy Internet opinions. Um, on the abstract of this research, it, it, it said gastrointestinal disease 
is often overlooked or just simply forgotten as a cause of osteoporosis. And again, some people don't make the connection because many times the cause is several steps away from the symptom or the disease. Um, Osteoporotic fractures can be very, very devastating. I'm going to tell a story before I get too much into it. When my mother was 62, for some reason she fell off the porch. I don't I don't know what happened there, but it was, you know, about a foot, foot and a half, maybe a foot and a half off the porch down to the soft ground. And she broke her wrist and she had bones sticking out of her wrist, you know, punctured through the skin. And so I took her to the real small hospital and they had a general surgeon put it together and it didn't heal correctly probably no fault of the surgeons but it didn't heal correctly it was not a major fall why at 62 would you fracture your wrist that terribly at such a young age well i made her yes i made my mother go get a second surgery she said well i'm old well, I don't think 62 is old, but she said, I don't, I can do without the use of my hand. I said, Mommy, you're right-handed. We're going to go get more surgery. So I took her to Shreveport to some uh, pretty much world-famous surgeons that did a lot of athletes, and she got use back. Well, my brother and I, both chiropractors, and both really are heavy into the nutrition, we uh, encouraged, <laughs> encouraged my mama to take a lot of these things that Janet and I are going to talk about. And... Uh, Even into her 80s, when she'd have a more severe fall, she would not break a bone. So bone density can get better and better and better if you take care of the reasons why uh, it was going downhill anyway. So back to this uh, research article, and I'm just going to hit the highlights. Uh, Some of the nutrients necessary for bone health is calcium and vitamin D. But I think you should be very wary of thinking that's the only thing you need because I've read other studies that said people that took just calcium by itself actually had an increase in hip fractures and lumbar spine fractures in later life. There's much, much more than calcium and vitamin D in rebuilding bones. uh, One of the other things that it talks about is, you know, smokers have much more of a tendency to have fractures. Uh, Sedentary lifestyle, and we're going to talk about that. Hypogonadism, and it's like, oh, you don't have enough hormones. And we see people all the time that have bad, low hormones or an imbalance in the hormones. And actually, some of the hormonal medications and fertility drugs can cause them to start having osteoporosis. You know, that's really a good point. Um, so, you know, we're going to go over all the necessary things, and you can get it in two, three, four different supplements. We have literally had little old ladies, and, and I call them old um, very affectionately. Any Anytime I say old man or old lady, I'm talking about somebody 10 or 15 years older than me, whatever that is. But uh, they've come back with a bone density scan that got better within two years, and Years ago, I said, no, 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 bone turnover is a seven-year process. You can't do it in two years. And I've had so many of them throw their uh, bone density test in my face, and I got red-faced and apologized. So I learned something every day. Even though it's a seven-year turnover, it can be done much, much more quickly than that. Now, these were people that were dedicated and realized it wasn't going to happen in three weeks or three months. Um So, and in this study, for those of you that want to look it up, uh, it talked about how Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, malabsorption uh, had a major contributing factor to these fractures. Um, Osteoporosis generally is considered an old age disease, but it can be people of younger, younger ages we're actually seeing. But it's usually uh, people that have bowel disease, or many times it's because you had a gastric bypass. I've seen that happen so many times. Um, And the heartburn medications that so many people are on out there for um, acid reflux and indigestion, They're actually related to bone fractures, the the proton pump inhibitors, the PPIs like Prilosec, Prevacid, Protonix, and Nexium, 
are most commonly used for treatment of chronic heartburn and indigestion. You need more acid to get these nutrients out, not right. less. And, and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. They always say, um, well, you have too much stomach acid, so let's give you one of these drugs so that it helps eat that up because you're producing too much. You know, you know that's a good thing. I'll go back to my mama and uh, <laughs> love talking about her, but um, she was on... I forget which one, Nexium Prilosec or something, and she had bad GERD. And, you know, I'm not saying she shouldn't. I don't I don't mess with people's drugs. That's not my job. But I said, well, if you have to um, take it, fine, for comfort. Uh, but my sister called me one time and says, Stephen, Mama's uh, looking in the mirror talking to strangers, uh, making coffee with no water. She urinates and can't stop it. She's locked up, can't have a bowel movement. And she's trying to turn on the gas stove, but not getting it lit. I said, geez, I am booked up today. Never mind. I'll cancel everybody and run to see my mama. <clears throat> well, they just doubled her dose of whatever drug it was. Well, that makes you B12 deficient because you have to have B12, you know, for, for bone density as well as for your mind and energy. And most people never think of B12 like that, so... I gave her medical doctor all the research, I mean, massive amount of research, and said, would you please give my mother a B12 shot once a week? Well, the doctor wouldn't do it. So we had to give my mother massive doses of B12 because of the malabsorption. And that's uh, within about three weeks, her mind came back, and she lived many, many healthy years past that. And I've heard people say, well, there's no way that you should need a multivitamin that has several thousand times the RDA. Yes, honey, you do. Because just because it's several thousand times the RDA doesn't mean you're going to absorb it. So if you don't have big amounts there, you can't absorb enough. So yeah, B12 is incredibly important. I take it for my heart and my brain. And there's other research that says uh, homocysteine, a higher homocysteine can lead to osteoporosis. Well, we generally think of homocysteine as being an um, anti-healthy heart thing, and that's like a B12 and sometimes B2, B6, and folic acid, and usually it has to be the specialized type, the 5-MTHF. So, yeah, B12 is good for more than just energy and heart and brain. And it's very interesting you you say that um, because probiotics are actually very beneficial for balancing the stomach acid uh, because you're actually wanting to to build the stomach acid up. And we do that with things like orthodigestime because it has um, betaine in it or hydrochloric acid that helps break down the foods better. And that helps you with uh, prevention of osteoporosis down the way. But probiotics are very important in it also. Because you can take all the supplements, you know, like all these vitamins and minerals we tell you about, but with no stomach acid or low stomach acid, you don't have the ability to break them down. So they, the supplements will actually have a zero effect until you fix your stomach acid balance first. So we always try to make sure that um, you know that this all starts in the gut. So, you know, if you're just running to the health food store and grabbing a multivitamin and think you're doing yourself a world of good. Um you may probably do have a digestive problem to start with, so you may not even assimilate what you're trying to break down. You know, that's that's really good. Uh, and, and when people fracture their hips, sometimes they say, well, I fell, and when I hit, I fractured the hip, but many times it actually fractures and then you fall. Uh, what happens is you usually get about 30% permanent disability. You get about 15% death rate within the first year because of the complications. Um, the ability to maintain healthy or independent living goes down about 80%, and that costs about $13 billion a year. And, you know, most of this, or, or a large amount, could be prevented if people would just spend a little bit before it gets to be a big deal. I'm, I'm, I miss the old fairy tales. You know, the stitch in time saves nine. Well, most of the time we wait till it rips, and then you know we're, we're not proactive and preventative. That's that bothers me. And speaking of proactive and preventative, 
we do have a few products that we recommend for you when you're trying to make sure that you're putting all the right minerals in. And a couple of them you've probably not heard of before um, because they're not widely known. But Dr. Lewis uh, is smart enough to research all kind of things. And uh, we have found these very helpful on our lab when they come back because we can actually see on lab Um, under the alkaline phosphatase on whether someone's leaching calcium out of their bones way before they get diagnosed with uh, osteopenia or osteoporosis. But, you know, for like young girls that are in their 20s, they need to be taking um, something that we recommend called osteobase because it's a good overall uh, amount of calcium and magnesium. Especially Um, if you're on uh, birth control pills also. Right, and uh, K2, which I wanted Dr. Lewis to talk a little bit about uh, K2, because in our women that have, um, w- when they have osteoporosis or osteopenia, we give them a product called K-Force. Uh, and most people go, well, I know about vitamin D, and I take a high dose of vitamin D. But vitamin D is um, is good. It's hard to absorb, and I wanted him to tell the story of why we use K-Force. I was hoping she'd tell the story, but since I'm put on the spot... He's a better storyteller. Uh, God, she caught me in a lie. Um, <laughs> you know, vitamin D is like the bellhop. This is the story I tell. It's like the bellhop that opens the door and gets you in the luggage and carries you into the fancy hotel. Calcium? Yep. Calcium's coming in the hotel. Vitamin yep. D is the bellhop? Yep. And, but if you don't have K to take you in the luggage up into the rooms, taking calcium up into the rooms, which would be the osteoclasts, the bone builders, you don't rebuild the bone. And so K is very critically important. That would, you know, that'd be like Janet's vitamin D and I'm vitamin K. We're not that important apart, but together there's magic. Ah, Okay, so the calcium's just going to hang around in the lobby because it don't know where to go yeah. until the K actually takes it to the room. Well, it'd be mobilized, the, the calcium will. And, you know, there's been massive amount of studies, I think it's 43, that says the K actually lowers your chance of heart attack and stroke and lowers your coronary calcium score because it takes the calcium and does not allow it to be deposited into your coronary arteries. Huh. Wedge that one in, didn't I? Interesting. <laughs> And we also have another product that probably no one's heard of, and we haven't put many people on it because um, uh, actually they have to have osteoporosis mostly before we we recommend it. But it's a a mineral called strontium. It's S-T-R-O-N-T-I-U-M. It's kind of new as far as research uh, goes, but they actually... Uh, it's it's a mineral that's similar physical and chemical properties to calcium. And research has shown that strontium provides all natural bone support through its ability to naturally increase the formation of osteoblasts, which osteoblasts are cells that build up bone and slow down the formation of osteoclasts, and that are cells that break down bone tissue. So it helps to maintain healthy bone density. So any of you that are going for bone scans, um, we would love for you to tell us where you are. And then what we recommend is a cocktail of strontium and the K-Force and the osteobase so that you have a very well-rounded group of minerals that can help rebuild bones and then get you another bone scan done about a year down the road and see what it's doing. Um, it has actually should rebuild the bone. Yeah, so. we've seen some really good uh, results there, but you know, there, <clears throat> excuse me, there's so many things that have to do with uh, rebuilding the bone. It's a balance of magnesium. Boron is very important. Potassium, the right kind of folic acid, C, vitamin C, uh, D, E, and K play pretty vital roles, but you can throw in collagen, glucosamine, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Sometimes copper is very important. But uh, there's just so much that you need to do. I want to get to that question uh, that, well, Joe had in particular. Oh, he was question and answer time. Okay. Uh, We have a couple. 
we had Joe, who always is great. We, if you're wondering how you ask questions, you can actually go on uh, Dr. Lewis's Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis on Facebook and um, send him a friend request and he'll accept you into the group and you can ask questions there and read what other people have asked. You can also email him at doc, it's D-O-C, at greenwisdomhealth.com and ask him questions that way and um, we can answer your questions on the air. So this is this is kind of cool. But Joe's question is, is he has two. When do men start needing to support their prostate because he hears you always talking about the minerals like zinc and things and he wants to know at what age should you get that started i think about 40 but again it it depends on how much free and weekly bound testosterone you have uh, that's one of the reasons we were late getting in here is uh, i was talking to a guy and he has like 766 on his testosterone which is pretty awesome nowadays but he only had 11 percent free and he said, well, how do I get it higher? I said, you do this, 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 and this. And it's called you know, natural aromatase inhibitors. So I think 40 is a pretty good general rule. Uh, and in the thing I take, uh, you know, it's got the zinc, it's got the selenium, but it's the uh, real absorbable type, and it's got enough copper. But the aromatase inhibitors are things like salt palmetto, nettles root, pygium. You know, there's just, you know, there's many of them. And DIM is a very important important one the beta cystisterol uh which you hear about on tv i wouldn't do it by itself but it's important and then milk thistle turmeric green tea you know things like that the super antioxidant things uh so about 40 i don't know how old you are joe but you look good on facebook so you may be doing fine he also wants to know if he can eat corn he knows that you talk about the bad corn the genetically modified corn but what if it's a non-gmo corn do you Do you feel like that's something you can have? Yes. And, of course, we have extremely heavy Hispanic influence here in northeast Texas. So, you know, we prefer corn tortillas over, you know, flour, although I'm sure we're not getting the, you know, organic. Uh, We do have supplements to take that will offset the bad effects of the GMO stuff. And I, I think if you can avoid it, yeah, it's worth the time, effort, energy, and money. So, yeah. Go for it if it's non-GMO. And Joe, I personally think corn's a great idea every now and then because it's a great visual effect for bowel movements to see how long your transit time is between your meals. So if you think you're not going to the bathroom correctly, have a little corn. See how long it takes to see it come through because it should be. Or if you're Cajun, eat, eat okra and the gumbo, you know, get the okra seeds. Uh, it, look, we're not even in the elimination phase of this series. And she's already talking <laughs> oh. about three trains in, three trains out. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to help. Yeah. And then we have Kim that asks about supplements for stress. And we're pretty excited about our stress supplements because we have a couple of them. Uh, well, we're getting better and better results, or people are telling us, they're calling us. Uh, Kim's a sweet little lady, and I think it's Antioch, Tennessee. I think that's over close to Memphis. She is a doll, you know, the things that she sends us, saying thank you for the results that her family gets. But go ahead and talk about those, Janet. Well, we have some that are for people that have anxiety, and then we have some for people that have anxiety with depression. And the one for anxiety is serenity, um, because people that have signs of anxiety are irritable and agitated. They have negative thought patterns. They may feel wired or restless, uh, frequent mood swings, or they have difficulty fa- have difficulty falling or staying asleep. They go, oh, hmm, maybe I ought to have a little bit of this. This, this is pretty good stuff. But it's called serenity. The other one is uh, has got a little bit different ingredients. And um, it's got tyrosine in there, so that's more for depression. It's for people that have more issues with, like, negative thought patterns, anger and irritability, real scattered thoughts. They're they're poorly motivated, and they have difficulty concentrating. So, so those, if your husband won't get off the couch, stir it in his coffee. And, and it's called Cerevive. And um, it's actually been so popular. It's actually the small bottles on back order right now. It's coming back in in a week or so, but we do have the large ones in stock. But um, those two have been fantastic. So, um, and then we have one more thing we want to follow up with because uh, we get some really great feedback from you guys, which we really appreciate. 
Uh, we actually had a lady that took the time to come in here earlier, and her and her husband, her name is Sharon, they've been patients of ours for probably 10 or 12 years now, and she told us today that she just wanted to thank us because they're now watching their friends, well, let me back up, when they first came to see us, her husband, she said, I'm pretty sure he would not be alive now if he had not stayed and continued the programs with us all this time but they've been with it now so long that they're watching their friends get sick and have heart problems and hospitalized and cancer diagnosis and she said and we're still over here making it pretty good and it's like how do you really put a value on that you know people say does this stuff work well when you start noticing that you're still doing well and your friends around you aren't doing so well and they're the same age and they haven't really done anything to take care of their health that's kind of a marker on how you know something works but for her to walk in and tell us thank you and uh, know that we've helped them on their journey and might have made their lives better down the road just meant everything to us and that's exactly what we want to do for y'all we would like to help you have a a life worth living so if you're new to the show go to our website greenwisdomhealth.com fill out the health survey start listening to our podcast download them and subscribe to them because we want to help you get back to the state of feeling good where you're meant to be we hope you have a very blessed week and we'll be here next time with the green wisdom health show Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.